Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Carolina Panthers seven round mock draft. We've got mock drafts lined up from now through Sunday. We've got the Carolina Panthers, the Falcons, the Dolphins, the Broncos, Washington, and then Sunday we have the Detroit Lions. Today we are doing the Panthers. If you don't know, this and all the teams I just listed are going to be based off of the uh, first round mock draft that I did on Monday yesterday. There'll be a link right over here somewhere if you haven't seen that yet. So the, the Panthers first round pick has already been made. You already know what it is. Again, if you haven't yet, go back and look at that. Um, we're going to cover it, but this is just a continuation off of that. I thought that'd be kind of a fun way to do that because I always do these and I talk about, well, we traded a second round pick and it, it doesn't matter because we don't ever actually go into what happens later. Or we talk about, well, we do this, but you know, later we can get a guard or something. We don't need it now. Let's actually go into it. Um, now all the picks that I made last week, that's done. That's erased. Forget about that. So there's going to be some repeat picks from last week and everything else. This is based on this and the additional six teams, whatever. So thanks for checking this out, and um, let's get started. So one additional thing I want to clarify, I do not do compensatory picks. So that's just not a thing. It adds a whole lot of other, another layer of complexity, and they're not official yet. So with the seventh overall pick in the first round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select... Trey Lance, quarterback, North Dakota State. Again, I've been over this already before, so I don't want to go too much in depth. If you want to know, go watch the video. Um, but I just, it, it really, for a lot of teams, for a lot of teams for me, it comes down to, I like the quarterback. I really like Teddy, good dude, talented. But is he the guy that's really, I mean, again, what what is the standard? What are we shooting for? I mean, are, are we wanting to be like Pat Mahomes, and the Chiefs? Are we wanting to be like Drew Brees and the Saints? Do we want to be like Aaron Rodgers and the Packers? Or do we want to be like Stafford and the Lions? You know what I mean? Like Stafford's a good quarterback. He's fine. Why are we okay with fine or even good? How about we try to find somebody that's elite? And listen, if it doesn't pan out, I didn't say we had to cut Teddy. I didn't say we got to kick him off the team. We keep Teddy. We draft Trey Lance, right? The point is though, we're not in this to win the division we're not in this to limp into the playoffs we want to dominate we want super bowls we want dynasty so we're going in a different direction whether trey lance is the guy or not is a separate uh situation but a, a relatively similar to cam in that he's at a massive cannon of an arm and obviously is a freak of a running quarterback so we're gonna bring that dynamic back to carolina and uh, we're starting a new era with trey lance with the 42nd pick in the second round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Walker Little, offensive tackle, Stanford. I mean, look, you get a new quarterback, you know the drill. We're getting wide receivers and tight ends and offensive linemen and anything we can to try to take the pressure off of this quarterback having to do absolutely everything. Again, we've got Teddy, so we can ease him in. We're going to build up the offensive line. I, I Listen, I know Moten is a, a slam dunk. I love that guy. He's doing a great job, but Russell Okung is – older he's becoming a free agent i think after 2020 so I, he may not even be around in 2021 um so we we, we've, we can't let that side of the line die so we're gonna bring in walker little the biggest issue with him is sort of a smaller sample size i think he was a very good tackle at least in terms of his, his pass protection in 2018 didn't see it wasn't all that great in 2017 2018 very very good in terms of pass protection 2019 um i believe he was injured and then 2020 he opted out so again just that small little thing he's had a bunch of injuries which is a concern but a dominant massive pass blocker the only other red flag if you look at pff i'm not a big fan of his run blocking but if you get a six foot seven top tier pass blocker to help pass protect our quarterback i'm good in the second round a guy that's a plug and play starter day one let's do it with the 73rd overall pick in the 2021 nfl draft the Carolina Panthers select Jabril Cox, linebacker, LSU. Um, obviously, for a very long time, we had Luke Keekley, one of the best linebackers, I mean, historically ever, elite, elite, elite player. But outside of that, I mean, we haven't put a lot of resources into it. And you understand that, right? When you have one of the best, you don't need to draft. And then even when he leaves, it's still, there's a lot of other bigger priorities than linebacker. But we at some point, we got to start putting some resources into the position. The one thing I like, a couple things I like about Jabril Cox, first of all, 
the fact that he went from NDSU, North Dakota State, over to LSU, and he's still playing at a fairly high level. He's still a very, very good linebacker. The other thing, very much a modern NFL linebacker today. If there's one thing he's good at, it's coverage. He is a dynamic, freakish coverage linebacker. Um, in 2018, he had a, he had allowed a passer rating of 37.9. Uh, what was it? 210 yards allowed, zero touchdowns, four interceptions, two pass breakups as a linebacker. That's NDSU. 2019, it goes up to 79 overall passer rating, one touchdown, a pick, and five pass breakups. Still awesome. Goes to LSU. You expect it to fall off? No. Zero touchdowns, two interceptions, four pass breakups, 61.1 overall passer rating. He hasn't allowed more than 200 and. I mean, 258 was the most yardage he gave up in an entire season. That was in 2019 at NDSU. Right now, 2020 LSU, uh, he's given up 244 yards. He's not a bad run defender. That did fall off quite a bit when he went to LSU. Obviously, much more complex and difficult. But at the at the very least, in the third round, we're getting a dynamic, great coverage linebacker. And as much as I like a smash mouth, you know, linebacker. In the NFL, the fact of the matter is this is the direction we're going. It's going to be more beneficial to your team. I like Jabril Cox, and I think he's going to be a good fit in the third round. With the 104th overall pick in the fourth round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Israel Mukuamu, cornerback, South Carolina. Now, there's a good amount of youth with your corners, so I could see why some fans especially if you're more optimistic type fans you look at it and say no we got these guys they're young they're going to get better it's going to be great we don't need that I don't see one lockdown corner on this team and and not to say that Mukuamu in the fourth round is going to be a lockdown corner I just want better right the same thing we talk about with quarterback or corner yeah quarterback there's you know do we want just mediocre across the board and, and as far as I can tell I mean again there's young guys maybe they're going to get better I don't know it's just not good enough so I'm just going to keep taking swings. Again, we're getting into the later rounds, so the optimism that they're going to be like elite lockdown guys goes down. But I still think he can come in potentially if he has a good season to be like the number two corner on the team. Six foot four, beast of a cornerback. Obviously, if you're going in the fourth round, there's some things that are lacking, but he's got all the tools in the world. Massive, massive guy, and um, it'll be good to be able to take on like the Julios in the league. You know, the the, the bigger body, longer tougher press type of guys so israel mukuamu to the panthers in the fourth round with the 135th pick in the fifth round of the 2021 nfl draft the carolina panthers select Devonte wyatt defensive tackle georgia um look i know we got Derek brown and you have to assume he's going to get better right now it hasn't been great but even if he does improve it's still just a bad front i want to get better across the front and the defensive tackles in particular, even with Derek Brown, are not good enough. But again, even if he improves, we still need a lot. You know, you look at the linebackers, the edge, the, the, the interior, the whole package is just not performing up to what we want. So again, we add Jabril Cox, we add Devontae Wyatt. Hopefully we start to kind of bulk up a little bit. And even adding a six foot four corner, like let's get more physical. Let's get mean back to this team. It's worth a shot. Devontae Wyatt out of Georgia. 300 pounds he's not he's not a big old nose tackle type of guy he's kind of a two-way um he's a better run defender than he is a pass rusher but not terrible 16 pressures i think in about 190 attempts so roughly eight ish nine ish percent whatever that is capable not going to be elite but capable and i think in the fifth round if you get a guy that can help you be better up front period that's going to be a good thing and i think defensive tackle is one of those positions you can to some degree expect um, to still have some talent in the fifth round. So Devontae Wyatt at 135. With the 170th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Ben Cleveland, offensive guard, Georgia. Um, the, the interior, again, building up the offensive line for our quarterback. We've been doing a lot of defense lately. I want to get back to helping out our offense. Um, the guards, I don't think, are playing up to par. And even on top of that, a lot of these guys are coming up for contracts. So uh, we need the bodies. We need the talent. And I, I still think at 170, um, guard is another position where it's it's not as big of a difference, right? I mean, it, quarterback is basically first-rounder bust. Guard is, is a little bit more iffy. Um, six foot six is a little bit bigger than you would expect. But a couple things I like about Ben Cleveland. First of all, he's been around a long time. He spent four years at Georgia. He's playing this year. Um, 
been solid since day one. Started as a freshman in 2017. He gave up his only sack that year. In fact, it was, I mean, by I shouldn't say by far his worst year, but one sack, two hits, four hurries. Uh, he hasn't given up one sack or two hits since. This year he gave up one hit. It's the first time he gave up a hit since. So we're talking uh, 2018. Granted, he didn't play, it looks like a full season, but zero sack, zero hit, zero hurries. Uh, in 2019, give, didn't give up a single sack or a hit. In 2020, hasn't given up a single sack all year. The, the one hit he gave up was just this last game against Missouri in week 15. Um, he gave up the first hit he has since 2017. So he's been around a long time playing for a big program, does a really good job. I just, I don't see him really failing. I'm not saying he's going to be a pro bowler, but I think we can start him week one. Finally, with the 201st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Donovan Steiner, safety, Florida. I mean, it's the seventh round. It's kind of a flyer. I just, I generally, genuinely don't like the safeties that you guys have. I mean, there's some optimism about some of the guys possibly taking a step like Chin, second round pick. Not really seeing it, though. Um, so it really is just kind of just throwing more at the wall and seeing what sticks at this point. We're going to bring in Donovan Steiner. He's going to come in. He's going to compete. Again, it's the seventh round. Don't expect a ton. I mean, is he grading out super well? Does he have some elite stats? No, man, he's a seventh-round prospect. I will say in 2019, he was pretty dominant. He had an 85.7 overall grade, 66.3 uh, passer rating when targeted. It had four interceptions, a pass breakup. None of that's going on this year, so that would explain why he's kind of fallen down the draft board. So, I mean, there's there's potential, right? He's a seventh-round guy. We're going to bring him in. We're going to help him compete, mostly at six foot two, 210, playing strong safety, but we can move him around, try him at free, try him at strong, put him in the box. I don't know, man, but um, I do think we need to get better at safety, so Donovan Steiner it is. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of the Carolina Panthers. Again, check in tomorrow. We're doing the Atlanta Falcons, so we'll get a little bit of rivalry thing going on there. We do have the Monday mock that was last uh, yesterday. We got another one coming out next Monday, assuming everything goes to plan. Um, if you like it, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. That would mean a lot to me. Um, this thing is growing fairly quickly, and I do appreciate all your support. If you have any thoughts or comments, please put them in the comments section. We're going to be running through these a lot, and one of the benefits of the seven-round mocks, they don't get a lot of views. They're, they're kind of small, but the comment section helps me out a lot for the next week's mock. I learn a ton about the team in terms of needs, don't needs, thoughts, etc. So any comments about the Panthers, please leave them below. It's going to help me for next Monday's mock. Otherwise, you guys have a great day, and I'll catch you next time.